Um, now we are going to look at the mobile WiMAX network architecture. Uh, this architecture includes certain components and their interaction uh, pretty much similar to what we have seen earlier in uh, uh, the 3GPP uh, architecture. Since the WiMAX forum has defined the overall architecture because um, IEEE had only focused on the physical and the data link layer, so WiMAX Forum has encompassed all these layers and uh, whatever functionality the network is supposed to provide for these layers. Uh, the architecture for uh, uh, mobile WiMAX release 1.0 and 1.x, it means the other variants 1.1 and so forth. And mobile WiMAX 2.x is essentially the same. The only difference being uh, Mobile WiMAX 1 is based on IEEE 802.16e uh, and the version 2 is based on M. Uh, so this consequently translates into a change in the uh, physical and data link layers of the uh, mobile stations as well as the network elements. So the user equipment or the mobile stations would now differ. Uh, in the earlier version, it was the mobile station. In the more advanced 2.0 mobile WiMAX, it is um, advanced mobile stations. Let's look at the overall architecture, starting from uh, the leftmost side, where we have the air interface or the user equipment. Uh, you see, we have either mobile stations here, or we have um, advanced mobile stations. Um, then we have the access service network, that is the access side of the uh, network architecture. Here we have either the base stations or we have advanced base stations. Uh, this difference in terminology essentially implies to uh, better uh, modulation and multiplexing schemes, uh, revised uh, packet structure, pa uh, packet handling, and the uh, uh, software components which handle these uh, uh, packets and traffic. Uh, then we have the uh, uh, access service network gateways, uh, which provide connectivity uh, between the mobile station and the um, connectivity service network. Connectivity service network is uh, more or less the core network side that hosts uh, uh, servers which are responsible for providing uh, both uh, bearer paths as well as the um, uh, bearer channels, bearer paths and the signaling network. Uh, so we see here we have the uh, mobile stations, we have the uh, access side, we have the connectivity side with a lot of application servers and other kinds of network management servers. So this is what we conclude. We have uh, the mobile stations, the access service network, and the connectivity service network. Just going a little more into detail on the access service network, um, this is like a radio access network uh, in 3GPP. Um, it comprises uh, home node Bs, if you may, of uh, WiMAX. Uh, so here, the entities or the modules which provide uh, services to the mobile station are either the signaling um, service and the data service. Uh, signaling service actually is uh, for managing and controlling the mobile station. It involves uh, functionalities starting from authentication, the AAA services, the distribution of keys, quality of service enforcement, um, queuing, scheduling, etc., mobility management when a mobile station or, the, or a user equipment leaves one network premises enter into the other, and maintaining the connectivity. Uh, so once this control entity is done with its functionality, then the bearer path or the data path 
is established between the mobile station and the internet. Uh, then we have the uh, connectivity service network. Uh, here connectivity implies the IP connectivity because the radio connectivity has already been taken care of by the ASN. Uh, so uh, the CSN like uh, the evolved packet core is all IP based. Um, it involves all these different kinds of servers. Um, now the connectivity uh, uh, service network is responsible to provide services to the ASN which in turn is providing services to the mobile station. So indirectly CSN is providing the ex external IP connectivity, the public IP cloud to the mobile station. 